were at the Lewis Miller Museum on December 1, 2004, and we're going ahead with our interview of veterans. Would you please state your name? My name is, is Joseph Armand Russo from Music Falls, New York. All right, and would you tell us a little about before you went into the service, what you did and your life? I was born in Sherbrooke, Quebec, Canada, March 28, 1928, of an American parent. So I stayed in Canada until the age of 20. In 1948, I came to the States to stay. Then I enlisted in the service. All right, and, and what, when you enlisted, what did you enlist then? What's the branch? The Army. All right, and... The, uh, 6th of December, 1948. You dis and you were in the Army. All right, when, where did they send you in the Army? I uh, took my, uh, my tra basic training in Camp Pickett, Virginia with the 17th Airborne. Then I went to the, the transportation the companies in the Fort Eustis, Virginia I to see. learn how to load the uh, cargo and unload cargo and, and personnel on ships and planes and trains. So that was your major job. You learned, They taught you how to do the Correct. actual loading of these different vehicle yes. types of transportation. Right. All right. Well, so where did they send you after they taught you that? Well, I went on... Uh, maneuvers in Vieques in, uh, in January uh, 50, uh, 50, and we were there for for, the, for two weeks on non maneuvers. And then, then I came back to Eustis, and uh, then when I went on maneuvers at the Pope Air Force Base in April. Then in uh, May, I got shipped to uh, uh, the, the Fort Lawton to uh, Seattle, Washington, on, on my way to Alaska. And in June, while I was there, I uh, the Korean War started. While you were in California getting ready to go to Alaska? Uh, no, I was in, wa in Washington State. Oh, Washington in, in, in State. In Seattle. I see. All right, so there you were, and the w Korean War broke out. Correct. And I was sent to California to, to, to prepare to be shipped to, to, to Korea. Then uh, I got on board ship, and they called four names out to get off the ship, and uh, two two of us got transferred to uh, Oakland Army Base, and two got I got transferred at uh, Fort Mason, the port embarkation in San Francisco. I see. And to what did you uh, process do? the personnel and and uh, then the uh, dependents that were coming back from from Japan. I see. What ha what what do you mean by dependents coming back from Japan? The uh, the, the wives and the children of the of the uh, of the veterans of, of, of the veterans of, and uh, in other words they went to Korea and their families and, got and shipped back and you had to help process them back into the country that's correct I see okay so they were loading ships and doing taking care of the personnel first and then what happened then I uh, once this this was over with the, the with the dependents. I got uh, transferred to a Camp Stoneman for uh, to the Ford Transportation Truck Company, which was assigned to Atomic Energy Commission. I see. What we did, <coughs> the uh, the first of December, I was shipped to the to the Marshall Island to te to uh, uh, test and the, the greenhouse operation. And what served. was the greenhouse operation? That was uh, in uh, April uh, 1951. And and what did they, what did you know that was the name of it the code name what what did they do what were they we doing test, we test the four H bomb um, I mean the uh, A bomb four A bombs and uh, we just when they blast the bomb we just uh, sat there with the dark goggles and we just look at them and how close were you to where well, they detonated it in the Marshall Island I was uh, no closer than about fifteen miles fifteen miles because they tested at the other end of the lagoon. I see. And and you were there when they tested the fourth. And and what did you see? I mean, what you just saw the 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 glow of it, the mushroom and the uh, the colors of it. Then then orange and uh, and uh, yellow and with the dark goggles that you can't see the sun through. It looks like there was ten suns out. I see. It was that bright. It was that bright. I see. And then. Uh, weren't they worried about radioactive fallout and so well, forth at that time? Or? We were checking for that, but 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 they didn't know that what the what the was uh, 
how many rotogens you're going to have, how much uh, radioactivity you were going to right. have. Right. They had and no idea. And they didn't idea. know how much damage that was causing. So yeah. we were there for, for, uh, as, as guinea pig. I see, to find out how it was going to affect people. Right. I Correct. see. And did you have a Geiger counter badge on? Or? I, I did. We had a color badge that if we had uh, some, uh, some, some radiation on it, they read it. And, uh, but most of the time they didn't pick them up. I said, they didn't even pick up the badges. No. They just let you wear them. All right, so you finished that, uh, uh, that time test. of tryout, and what, what came next? I, I came back to the States uh, in May, and uh, then I, I was assigned to Camp Stoneman again. That was my home base. And in September, we took a convoy over to, uh, to the uh, desert in, in, in Nevada, and we... Uh, then we started the test there. We again, we well, did uh, seven tests. Yeah, but before that, there was no camp there, was there? In no, the no, no. What we, was the name of that camp? We we, we pull up and uh, and my uh, my uh, CO asked uh, asked at the gate uh, the, the, where we were going to go, and he told us to go in the desert and pitch tent, and that's how Camp Desert Rock got started. So you were one of the first ones there I, in the I test. Was, I was the head of the jeep <laughs> okay. of the convoy. All right, so what happened, uh, now Now they built that, and then they started another test site. And that was called... Uh, no, this, this was uh, uh, Operation uh, Buster Jangle. All right. And uh, we did uh, above-ground test and underground test. I see. From... Uh, Point oh, uh, 0.3 to uh, about 15 kiloton. Yeah. And and what? how did the government set it up? In other words, they're going to drop a bomb at X. What did they have? So many distance away to hit something and so Well, they, they, at the, uh, at the test, we used to test some from the tower and some from the, uh, like I said, on the ground. And, and some would drop from, from so many feet. But, uh, at a distance, there was uh, like an, an airplane uh, 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 set in the in the field, and uh, the sheep and uh, and the animals, and uh, and houses with uh, with dummies in it, and that kind of stuff to see, you know, at at different distance from the well, the effect from, from would the be zero zone. I see. You want to get what what effect it was from the zero. Zone. That's correct. And where were you st uh, when this? Went well, off? we stood in the background, not too far away. And, How far and, would you say you were? Well, some of uh, some of them, the the smallest one, were about a half a mile, but With, some of them were two two or three miles. It all depended. Yes, yeah, see, but some were as close as a half a mile. Right. To Right. And the government at that time had no idea of uh, radioactivity, no. even though they dropped it on Japan? And because, uh, well, they, they did then, they did some of it, yes. But uh, the, uh, then once the blast went through, we had some scientists that some of us had to drive through the zero zone with the, with the uh, like an asbestos suit. I see. Uh, the, the and you were one of those suit. that drove through? Well, I didn't. I didn't drive through, oh, but some I of see. our of our men did. I see. Uh, and uh, that kind of stuff, you know. I see. So they were trying out how you, what kind of suits you could wear to say stop the radiation and the effect of it. It must have been the scientists knew more about it than, I the, see. The, the, than we did. <laughs> All right. So that was the end of that. How many uh, atomic bombs? We did, did they... uh, we did seven though, over there. Seven bombs they on, dropped on the ground, on the ground, above ground, and underground. I see. So okay, so when was this? When are we into now? About what? This time? is uh, this is the fall of uh, '51. All right, the fall of '51. From September to about the first of December. Okay, now you finished with the. Then yeah. I go back to Stoneman again. Yeah, because that's your home base. Then, uh, because we, uh, we're uh, the transportation for the GIs that are being sent overseas. Yeah. We, we brought them down from Camp Stoneman to, to uh, Pittsburgh, which was uh, where, where the ferry used to come to, to take them down to Fort Mason on, on board ship. And then they would ship overseas. Then they would ship overseas. I see. All right. Hey, you did that for a while, and then what happened? Then in June 1952, I got shipped back to to the Marshall Island for the uh, IV test, 
which we test two wands over there, which was, uh, one was the eighth wand, the first of November 1952. And you were there when they tested the first H bar. Yep. And tell us a little about that. Well, they didn't know how strong it was going to be, so they put us, uh, all personnel went on board ship about another 15, uh, 10 miles from the, from shore. I see. And, and we watched it, which means we were about 25 to 30 miles away from the zero zone. I see. And and what did they have in that zero zone? They had aircraft carriers, all, all kinds no, of ships, or no. what? Well, they had ships. They had ships that anchored, and uh, then they it blew them off. Yeah. And uh, one of them was a was an aircraft carrier. I don't remember the name of it, but uh, it stood on 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 end in, in the blast, which which the which the blast did. It used to be half a mile a mile wide on the uh, the funnel of it. Yeah, it went into a mushroom, a big then mushroom, it goes like they show in television. Mushroom, they're 30, 40,000 feet up, you know. Did you I have to wear black glasses in that when you were oh, 15 miles did. away? Oh, always did. Always wore black glasses. Always every... wore the dark the, the, the glasses to, to the test. Well, well, were there any other things you wore other than the dark glasses nope. to protect you? No. Nope. Otherwise, you nope. were wearing your regular clothes. That's correct. I see. All right, so that's in the Marshall Islands. And yep. They tried one bomb and the H bomb. You said. That's right. Okay, now what happened to you? Then I, I, I came home for discharge. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I wanted to ask you some questions about the uh, atomic tests. Now, did you keep in uh, keep in touch with any of your friends that were involved in uh, these tests to find out that people suffer from it to get. Uh, Cancer from it? Get anything I did, from it? I did. I belong to the National uh, uh, as a, uh, Radiation Survivor uh, I see. until 19, uh, 1998. I see. Then the head one uh, had an accident and uh, and died, and uh, then the the program got kind of let down. So I see. But what, what, in your own, you know, in your own understanding. Did, did this affect a lot of your friends? I mean, people that were in there with you? Did, did, was there any... I, I saw some in 1985 in Portland, Maine, and then in one of the, the, the reunion that was a little bit disfigured, and uh, then the, it had, the, they were sick, like, you know. Yeah, there were, the, so there were people that got sick from being oh yeah. at these tests. Oh, yeah. So you were pretty lucky that they, yep. that, it didn't affect you that much. I mean, it might affect you a little, well, but... On one of the tests on the, the Ivy, uh, they used to say, send the drone, B-17 drones through the clouds to collect the, the, the radiation. And they have, uh, they had boxes on the wings that were attached. And as, uh, as, uh, as I watched them come in, I was driving my CO up to the, the, the airport, like, and uh, so, so I had to stop to let the drone uh, uh, come down, and one of the box fell fell down, then went over the, the, our head, and, the, and my CO lost all his hair. I didn't. So there's something in the genes there that, that caused it. I see. And uh, you just get a, a funny feeling. It, it tastes funny in, in, in your mouth. I see. And they wash you down with uh, with some uh, chemicals that they have there, then. and and that to get some of that radiation off you when you're right, right. All right. So anyway, there you are. You went through all those uh, radioactive tests and all the bomb tests. So you you're one of the few people around there actually saw this happen. Well, uh, I saw a 12 atomic bomb and one H bomb. I mean, that's unbelievable. And, all right, so they sent you home to get discharged, you told us. And uh, what happened? I mean, uh, after you got discharged, what did you do? Well, I moved to Troy right. and uh, because my uncle and my grandfather lived there. Then I got a, a job there, and I ran the, 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 a gas station for about uh, two years. Then in 1955, I, I met a girl from here, from Hoosier Falls, and it, 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 we got married. And what was her name? Uh, Margaret uh, Sardlin. I see. And you, 
Got married, and what happened after your marriage? Where, where did you live? Did you live in Hoosick Falls I lived after that? Hoosick Falls. All right, and what did you do? Uh, then I, then I, I quit the business in, uh, in Troy. Then, then I started to work for Noble Wood. Yep. And I worked there until 1972. And what did you do for Noble Woods? I, uh, I, I was an erector. I, I built the machinery and I, I set them up. I got, I was a roadman, they, they call it. Okay. And you went repair. out to all the different factories that bought your the machines, the, the, and then the you would set them up and get them that's going. Correct. What kind of machines were they? Paper mill. Paper mill machines. All right. So you did that till until when? I, until 1972. Okay. In 1972, I went to work for uh, uh, Bendix in Green Island as a, as a machine repairman. And how and long? Then, how long did you work for Bendix? Well, I, I worked there for 18 years, and I retired and. Uh, 1990. I see. So you were commuting all the time from Hoosick Falls into Green Island. That's right. Working at Bendix. Yep. Well, did they ship you around or did you just set up in a plant? You worked in a plant? I, in I Bendix. Worked, you you I were in charge of keeping in, the machines in, 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 going. In the plant. I see. Right. You're keeping the machines going right. in Bendix. All right. Now, uh, tell us a little about your family. After you got married, uh, how many children did you and your wife have? Well, we had three sons. One got uh, hurt and uh, died in, 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 in an accident at the age of 15. And, uh, and the one right now is a pilot, and, and the other one works for the state as a, he's a, he's a deputy chief for the, uh, for the fire protection. Right. All right, so they still, uh, so you got, uh, and one son and her, his wife run the Upsy Daisy. Right. Right? That's correct. All right. So now what you uh, now what are you doing? I'm just retired. Just enjoying. retired, enjoying yourself. <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, Armin, we thank you for being interviewed. We thank you for your information. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us that you th think now that you'd like to say? I can't think of anything. To oh. be honest with you. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you very much for being here.